Hello, friends, family, and my followers. This is Hike360, and I'm here to give you a new hike this week. Woo! Woo -hoo -hoo! Hey, hey, my friends, my followers, my family, it's Hike360 here. I'm here to give you a new hike this week. I'm at Deer Grove in Palatine, Illinois. We're here to do 5.5 miles on a loop trail. So I'm out front or in front of uh, the Deer Grove trail system. And if you can see on the sign, we're right here. This is a parking lot. Number five. Number five, parking lot number five. We're gonna walk out and we're gonna do the entire yellow trail. And that's 5.4 miles here in our book it says 5.5 miles uh, and this is all happening on the west side of Deer Grove if you were to cross Quinton Road then you're gonna be on the east uh, east side of Deer Grove and I'm just finding out about this cool Camp Rheinberg uh, which is a campsite an RV site and uh, cabins uh, if you want to experience some camping for yourself so you don't have to go too far if you live in Chicago just drive on over to Palatine to Deer Grove uh, Camp Rheinberg and they will set you up for success over there uh, I'm going to be calling to make my own camping reservations for a week or two weeks or the next time they have av availability for me another cool part about Camp Rheinhorn uh, Rhein Rheinberg uh, is that they offer you know, beginner classes for uh, camping and uh, and I would assume hiking, uh, but they're there to help you. So that is what I know for now. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and get started. So come on over. This is hike number two in our book, right? Or three? Yeah, it's hike number three. Uh, the book starts with the Cook County section of hikes, and Deer Grove is number three, and then after this, we're gonna hit number two, which is, uh, can't remember the name off the top of my head. Either, but it's nearby. Very nearby. And we will be camping at Chano Lakes tonight over by Fox River and, well, Channel Lakes. So the book said that this, uh, this little connector path, which is an old road, uh, is just for us to connect over to yellow. The yellow path is not this cement. It should be a regular path, right? It should be. Yeah, he, he mentioned that if it, if it rained the day before, that it was going to be muddy. All right. So. I'm well, going to assume that it's just uh That's not a cement description. <laughs> right, exactly. And I guess this is a big spot for bike riders to come. In fact, our the author of the hiking book we follow mentioned that there's been a lot of scrutiny here from illegal uh, bikers that are just sort of biking off trail and off path and destroying the hillside uh, terrain that exists here. Well, they need some fat tire bikes then. Fat tire bikes is a good solution. Uh, it's a good solution because if you don't know your fat tire bike, the pounds per square inch that the tire uh, is, is inflated to is a very low number and a very low impact. Low impact. All right, let's see. What do we have here? Oh, well, we had to come to a stop. Uh, we have like a little marsh going on right here with a lot of strange, just bare trees coming out of the ground. Uh, it's just kind of a strange sight, so it caught my eye. And then I'll be quiet in a second so you can hear what I'm hearing. Some sort of croaking or I think it's, I think they're toads, frogs, but maybe they're insects, but let's, let's take a listen. It's pretty early for the insects.
I think it's been a lot of fun hearing these frogs. Last week at the Morton Arboretum was incredible. Um, and I, I hope it's more than a spring thing. I don't remember hearing the frogs like this last fall and summer. Yeah, the things that I'm thinking about are like it has to be really low traffic or no traffic in terms of people walking or cars going. Um, it has to be very quiet to, to hear these things and notice them. And that's special. This last year has really opened my ears to the soundscape. We've We've talked about the coyotes and the mm. herons making the pterodactyl noise. Um, I think the frog is just another layer to that. In a couple months, we'll have the cicada layer. Yeah, that'll be <laughs> that. Won't, that will not be hard to hear. <laughs> yeah, almighty layer. Yeah. You bring up a very interesting point. Okay, let's talk about it. Um, I'll start off by a little lighter topic. Uh, and I think this would be one if people wanted to comment, it would be a great subscribe to us and then also comment. Let's start a discussion. Yeah. Um, so at first I was gonna talk about, we just, you know, just came from a very quiet, listening to the frogs environment. Yet people passed us and they were listening to a radio as they walked. And I thought, you know, it's an interesting... I think we probably talked about radios last summer. Yeah, I remember talking about it uh, in the Des Plaines River hike of Lake County. Yeah. Um, and and is, that, is that obtrusive or not? Is that off-putting to other hikers or inconsiderate? So I'll tell you, for me, it's, it doesn't bother me. If people are walking on a hiking trail in nature and they've brought a radio along or they've brought speakers along and they're playing music, they're blasting music, that doesn't bother me. Does that right. bother you? If they were blasting music, yes. I, um, for the most part, yeah, you know, I'm not here to listen to music. Oh, oh, oh. deer. Bunch of deer right here. See, this is what I'm here for. I'm here for the walk and the deer. I want to have nature and wildlife encounters. Yeah. Um, if I wanted the radio, I'd be in the car. But that's my take. Right. And clearly, you know, we, for the most part, we're going to meet somebody we're walking past. So the radio is going to be a distraction for a teeny bit, not for a very long time. Right. And that's the, that's the thing that I'm thinking about right now is this preserve is a great example of being able to hold both. So they walked by with their radio on and we got to experience the deer. And the frogs. And the frogs. So it's not like one is causing the other to disappear. Um, so the topic which turned on the camera was the camera. Open for discussion. Love to hear your comments. Please comment. Let us know what you think. The, the question is is us filming, you know, if somebody walks by while we're filming, is that discourteous to the other person? Should we turn off kind of when we see them so we don't even get, put them in a situation where they may or may not be um, okay with it? So or just my, continue filming and let people walk by or hide behind a tree or whatever it is they're gonna do. So I'm hearing that you have been taking a proactive stance on that. So you turn the camera off before it gets anybody on film because you I try to yes yeah. you feel like that they would be bothered and right and we have someone walking so, so yeah i think that well let's walk while we we will see yeah. see this is me this is this is the problem that we're encountering and, and we're trying to figure it out because there's we don't know but we could turn the camera off and maybe cut our videos early or um, have them be disrupted by taking the proactive stance to preserving someone's privacy or do we ignore people we're around do we do we continue to record if we're passing someone on the trail 
Are, are people hiking part of the landscape? What? Are people hiking part of the landscape? Uh, uh, I mean, uh, one okay, way to okay. think of it is, is if we cut out the people or never show people, that's that's somewhat artificial because there are always people. Yeah. Well, and so I was going to say, so we can take that the proactive stance and cut it short and, and protect their privacy, uh, or if we that's can, if that's a concern of theirs, which well, we're making the assumption that it is. Right. So, or which do is we continue? Clearly, to, more of my generation issue than yours. <laughs> so, do we continue to record, get them on camera, and then if if you as a person are really bothered by the invasion of privacy, I would. I would have the hopes that that you come up to me and say, "Hey, I don't want to be on camera. It looks like you're recording." You know, I put the responsibility on the passerby to voice their concerns. Cuz we are in a public place and we are allowed to record this. And so if another person is in this pub sharing this public place, where do the lines, you know, where does the courtesy uh, courtesy lie? Um, and I just, I believe that it should be up to the other person to make m make a statement that they don't want to be recorded. If they feel that strongly about it. And obviously like we're not we could make the statement with people passing by with radio saying, turn it down. Yeah. Which I wouldn't do because I know that they're passing by. If we're hanging out at a, a, a big vantage point or something, and it's really bothering me and taking away from my experience at that place and they're not moving and I'm not moving, yeah, I might, I might be inclined to say, please turn it down. Just like I feel like if I'm walking by and someone's recording a video, I'm not gonna be inclined to say, please don't record me if we're just passing by. Yeah. Now, now if we're recording at a vantage point, uh, and someone's record, you know, and getting me on film for, a minute or several minutes or a long period of time, I may be inclined to say, please stop. But again, it, I feel like it, it's on me to say, hey, I don't like this. All right, so I'm gonna throw an exception out there, which is kids. Kids don't really have the wherewithal to make it. And, and really, you know, it, that, that is certainly more up to us to be proactive and not have, you know, video of kids. So I guess my thoughts are, and again, please comment below if you think there is any, you know, if you want to voice your opinion on the matter, uh, comment below, put a, put a timestamp so we know what part of this conversation you're responding to. Well, that's a smart idea. Uh, so children and kids, if the kids are with their parents, I think their responsibility, responsibility falls on their parents to say, I don't want my child recorded. If the child's alone, if it's like a teenager or a preteen or something, and they're alone, no parents, I think they're not considered in that moment to be not allowed to be on film. What does that mean in, in not double negative language? So like, I think it would be okay to get them passing by on, on film. So as we don't have to stop our own experience to be courteous to them or something along those lines okay well I'm glad we're throwing it out here because this is definitely an area where I think we agree to disagree yeah <laughs> yeah yeah I would feel very strong I do feel very strongly about it. like I don't like imposing my will on others in the first place um, but I definitely don't think it's okay to be doing that uh, to people that don't have the ability to stand up for themselves or, or shouldn't have to in the case of kids. What would you draw that line at the typical like 18 years old? I would draw it on anything that I would feel that, that I would have an internal, you know, like they look weirdness too about. young to be. Yeah, I mean, if they're 20 and they look like they're 16, I'm still going to be like, well, yeah. uh, well, let's, you know, give it the benefit of the doubt as possible. The toys like, no, don't just, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's a good. That's a good thing to controversy to throw in, but bringing it back, generally speaking, if we're on the move, I don't feel inclined to stop my my video, my experience in public, in nature, for the potential 
upsetness of another person. All right. Look forward to hearing from you. Yeah, we're good. No, oh, it's just super cool. Hey! I'm glad the weather is warming up a teeny bit, but this is the last cold day of the year. Hopefully. It does always snow in April, which may be tonight. What day is it today? April Fool's. April Fool's Day. It is a nice high pressure zone, cloudless blue sky. Ooh. The song is nice. What do we have here, my son? Well, I'm glad you asked, and maybe you can answer your own question because Ask I forgot. <laughs> we uh, got our classic homemade bread made by, made by yours truly, my dad. <laughs> uh, last night, actually. This is very fresh. Very fresh bread. Sunflower butter. Sunflower butter. And what's the jelly of the week? Gooseberry. We got the gooseberry again. Okay, winner, winner, gooseberry. <laughs> <laughs> we do have a surprise for the second hike. That'd be pretty fun. And we've got our water bottles from the Morton Arboretum hike from last week. Yes, definitely our our new hiking bottles. They securely close and they hold a good amount of water. Well, they're also tall and skinny, so they fit in the pockets nicely. Mm. So, I do like it. And we color coordinated, so we don't get confused. Plus, it supports the Morton Arboretum. Someday this will all be green. Maybe someday by the end of the month. <laughs> it happens fast. What is a gooseberry? I went over this. I forgot. It's a yellow berry. Okay. And that's about as much as I know. <laughs> I've had it before from Jerry's supermarket. The gooseberries. Yeah. They taste weird. They taste they taste good, but I would not get them on the regular. You're talking about it when it's a fruit, yeah. not when it's a jam. Right. And I probably wouldn't get the jam on the regular either. But it was something I had to try because I've had the gooseberry fruit. I think it's supposed to be like a Christmas type of fruit or some holiday type of fruit. Yeah, I can see that because uh, all the fruit trees in the northern hemisphere bloom around Christmas time. <laughs> <laughs> all right. That winter equinox is really a popular bloom time. <laughs> Brings out the best in the plants. Mm -hmm. But if you jarred it and jellied it, then you could do that during the regular season and save until Christmas. I can see that. What if you pickle it? You can pickle it. I love the stuff we've done and just the nature hikes along with like the, the food you know we're dehydrating and pickling and you know a hundred years ago that was that was it you know a hundred to you know infinity ago that was it that was how you did it that was the only choice you had preserve it yeah we didn't have refrigerators unless you lived in you know near glaciers and you could store it in ice permafrost Flash freeze. <laughs> we picked a spot where you could hear frogs. 
That's our new thing. It's nice that they came back. They quieted down when we first walked by. You're right. And now we fit into nature. We're just big ugly deer as far as the frogs are concerned. Do you think the deer think that we're small ugly frogs? Or big coyotes. Mm, big ugly coyotes. Gotta get the ugly part in there. Yeah, yeah I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have no tail, no feathers. Pigs. I mean, I think Walking other pigs. animals look at us the same way we look at like a, you know, a buzzard or a, those bald, hairless cats and dogs. <laughs> <laughs> Bald, hairless cats and dogs. No, we're done. <laughs> I have been told that horses, passing a horse on the trail, if you have a backpack on, that the horse will often mistake you as like a bear. So don't walk casually past horses with backpacks on. Come to the side and let them understand that you're not hostile. That would be one of the craziest nature fights ever to take place. A bear versus a horse. A bear versus a horse. <laughs> well, I would like to see had, what the happens. The Simpsons had like a shark versus an elephant or something <laughs> stupid like that or a crocodile versus an elephant. This, uh, the nature thing that we follow on Instagram, that is just crazy nuts. Yeah, we follow a page on Instagram, it's called The Dark Side of Nature and it posts like animal fights and just like gruesome nature encounters. Like, for example, one was like a deer trying to jump across a road and it just face planted, broke its neck and died. Oh, God. Uh, I saw one yesterday of one crocodile doing what's called the death roll on the other crocodile. Yeah, I saw that. So it takes a bite of the... It takes a hold of the other crocodile by the tail oh. and starts rolling and... If the other crocodile doesn't keep up with its roll, it's going to get its tail ripped off. Well, that's how, you know, the roll is how they kill. After they grab you and take you under, they'll roll you. And then they put you under a log or something underwater. And let you tenderize a little bit. Crocodiles tend to win. Unless it's against a, a lion for some reason, like lions and leopards. <coughs> right. We've seen a lot of videos of them going after and winning a fight with a croc. Yeah, I guess the leopard just and jaguars just know where in their necks, in the crocodile's necks, that they can... That's a dangerous prey. You know, yeah. you're, you're going to win, <laughs> win or you're going to lose. Like, I don't... What are we talking about? Well, first of all, we are at a pretty nice visual point which I think is the southern, I think this is Dundee here in the Northwest Highway, so southwestern corner. Yeah, that sounds right. Um, and we've had a nice walk. It's obviously, this is a dirt path. I've seen horse... Uh, droppings? Horse prints, not droppings, but prints. And I brought up the question, like, this is a f five plus mile hike in the forest. And yet we get the impression through the author and I think some historical stuff that I've heard that this is a boring hike. And, uh, and I'm not sure why that would be. I mean, we're walking through a forest. Why is this any more or less boring than any other forest we walk through? I mean, yeah, the way that you put it just now uh, is pretty fair. I think that the author wasn't very excited about this hike or didn't have a lot to talk about this hike because there's not a lot of history that happened here. And the only thing that I took out of the description of this hike was that it's important, this hike is important because it was like the first big, like, big land or big forest that was donated to the Cook County uh, Forest Preserve Organization or the Park District. It was the first, you know, it was like 500 acres of land donated in 1916. 
But besides that, it's just it's just a forest. There's not much that has happened here compared to like Ryerson Woods where there is, you know, Ryerson's cabin and yeah. You know, he had a big it, was, it had a lot of history there. Human history. Human history. Morton Arboretum, a lot of human history with that that name and where like being in glacial hills and moraine. That's got geologic history. A lot of nat yeah, natural history, yeah. And uh, this really yeah. doesn't have much of any. Yeah, there's no nobody really lived on this land. Not a lot of well, no glaciers touched this land or or affected it in any sort of big way. So yeah, I don't know, Dad, what do you think? Well, I, I think that's somewhat somewhat plausible in that most of our hikes have a reason. There's a purpose that land has been preserved or reserved. And this is just kind of land for the sake of land, which, you know, nothing wrong with that. But I can see Let's where it's it not necessarily all that exciting. So we'll have to look about this in other hikes to make sure that we have some kind of like history thing. Let's see if we can find a different piece yeah. of history. Yeah. Ooh, watch out. Yeah. Hey, yo. So we're over the five mile mark, which means we're coming toward the end. How was the hike? Pretty good, it was relaxing. Again, not a lot of history here, not a lot of things to be like looking out for, but it's a pretty well marked trail. It's a pretty simple trail. So we just kind of cruised and enjoyed ourselves. And we did huh. see two separate groups of deer. Yeah, Deer Grove lives up to its name. That's right. Uh, a lot of birds. Yeah. A lot birds. of good frogging. Frogs. So there, there's things to see out here, I guess. Uh, they're Wild definitely lighting. repairing or trying to, you know, keep it up. There were, you know, we had lunch on some trees that were being trimmed back and. A lot of buckthorn, some some burns. The buckthorn is pretty overwhelming here. It's on both sides of the trail buckthorn most of the time. Removal. Yeah. So this is cared for definitely, and uh, if, hey, it's a quick five plus, and I'm sure if we did the east side, you can make this pretty close to eight, nine. Yeah. Ten I'd, even. I'd agree with that. Hmm. So I'd say this would be a good, good hike. We will check out the campsite. We're going to drive past it? Yeah, I think we should drive in, see what the campground looks like. All right. And then see if we can make a reservation. Right. Just don't really know what service they use. Yeah, if they're on Reserve America or, or some other Cook county. county. Cook County Camping. Cook County Camping. Some wild looking trees. That's for sure. And some down trees. Well, I do want to check out the camping and maybe we can do the east side. The Jens Jensen Preserve on the east side. That's right. Okay, anything else? Not Just really. Just hamming to the camera, camera. Hey, hey guys. So we're coming up to the finish line here. It looks like we're going to have hiked six and a half miles. Oop, I'm still on maps. And just under two and a half hours. So Deer Grove Forest Preserve definitely holds up to its name. We passed like three different groups of deer. Yeah, we just passed one now. So from the last video where we said there are two groups, we added a third. There's a third. So lots of deer here and they're healthy looking and they're grazing. Uh, lots of frogs too. This is a place to come to if you want to experience the wildlife. We got the frogs, we saw the, po the dead possum, the deers uh, and the birds. The birds are coming back. We didn't mention the dead opossum. Well, that's because it's new. <laughs> so, you want to see living of course, animals? Of course, it could have been, been alive. We don't know. Yeah, it's an learned. opossum. <laughs> oh, yeah, because they feign death. Right. Feign death, yeah. Um, 
yeah so uh really good hike we had a lot of great conversations today definitely check out the other videos in the playlist uh we have well, we have many questions that we talked about and discussions that we wanted to open so we want to hear your thoughts so please find those videos and comment your thoughts below we are finishing up we're wrapping it up and we're gonna go hit another hike so uh, I will keep your eyes out because we're gonna bring you more content so if you haven't already like and subscribe this video uh, like this video, subscribe to our channel, and we will catch you on the next hike. Peace. Hey, hey, guys. So we're coming up to the finish line here. It looks like we're going to have hiked six and a half miles. Oop, I'm still on maps. And just under two and a half hours. So Deer Grove Forest Preserve definitely holds up to its name. We passed like three different groups of deer. Yeah, we just passed one now. So from the last video where we said there are two groups, we added a third. A third. Yeah. So lots of deer here and they're healthy looking and they're grazing. Uh, lots of frogs too. This is a place to come to if you want to experience the wildlife. We got the frogs, we saw the, po the dead possum, the deers uh, and the birds. The birds are coming back. We didn't mention the dead opossum. Well, that's because it's new. <laughs> so. You want to see living of course, animals? Of course, it could have been alive. We don't know. Yeah, it's an learned. opossum. <laughs> oh, yeah, because they feign death. Right. Feign death, yeah. Um, yeah, so uh, really good hike. We had a lot of great conversations today. Definitely check out the other videos in the playlist. Uh, we, have, well, we have many questions that we talked about and discussions that we wanted to open. So we want to hear your thoughts. So please find those videos and comment your thoughts below we are finishing up we're wrapping it up and we're gonna go hit another hike so uh, I will keep your eyes out because we're gonna bring you more content so if you haven't already like and subscribe this video uh, like this video subscribe to our channel and we will catch you on the next hike peace